This is The Roadmap with Ted Jenkins. Hey everybody, this is Ted Jenkins and welcome to The Roadmap exclusively here on America's Small Business Network. Every week, I try to bring you some of the brightest and best CEOs in and around the country. We talk about how to start a business, grow a business, run it, be successful, and maybe you too can exit stage left one day. Of course, I've got Leroy Height today. He is the CEO of Cutting Edge Firewood. I am fascinated about this business because, Leroy, when does anybody talk about firewood? <laughs> Around me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, like, so I, I read a little bit about your background that yes. you were, you know, uh, at Chick-fil-A for a while. Might have learned mm. a little bit of that. Thought about becoming an owner one day. Correct. And enterprise Rent-A-Car. We know that's a sort of an entrepreneurial model. But mm. what got you excited about getting into firewood? Ooh, I love the customer experience. And let me tell you about firewood. A fire is like a beautiful sunset. <laughs> no one on earth dislikes a beautiful fire. It's unifying. You can take anybody on earth and they will sit in front of a fire and enjoy it. It's universal, primal, and um, um, unifying, which is very important at this so time. So my experience as a consumer, and some yes. people watching this may think the same, is that typically it seems to me that people would buy firewood in one of two ways. Mm -hmm. One, I stop at a local grocery store, whether it's a Publix or a Kroger or wherever mm -hmm. it is in your area, and you pick up some little firewood in a mesh bag, right. take it home, or mm -hmm. you're riding on the side of the road and there's some cardboard sign that says, firewood and you back up your truck they put some firewood and take it home but mm -hmm. how did you come up with this model and the way that you deliver firewood and how is it so much different so i love the uh like i said the uh the customer experience on the other side before we got into the industry the industry standard was wood would sit outside for 12 months rot right, literally have right. mushrooms growing out of it i love to compare it to uh water for several reasons one is because uh, um when people are um, being rude and dogging us, they'll say, it literally grows on trees. Why would I pay for it? And I say, do you buy bottled water? It literally falls from the sky. And the industry before we got into it was kind of like a muddy puddle in your backyard. Right. Yeah, you can go and drink that. But when that's how firewood was when we entered. But we went in when it was like that. Um, skipped over that, skip well water, skip tap water, even skip the Aquafina and went straight to Liquid Death or whatever high-end water bottle right. company. Liquid Death was a good one, by the way. Everybody <laughs> goes to the conference. You know, I'm paying $10 for, for Liquid Death. You look cool, but you're still drinking water. That's, at the end yep, of the day. Yep. So explain for us how the model works in this. You know, yes. um, what, is it, what does it cost you to get firewood together? Yep. How did you price this out? Because I feel like which I think is good, by the way, you created a new market in here by going very, very high end in the firewood market. Correct. So ultimately, I love firewood because there really was no competition, completely undisrupted. And having a fire is all about that experience. So it was the perfect market to right. disrupt. It's kind of fun because what's another market that um, was completely undisrupted? Um, it's hard to think of one. I mean... There, there are other amazing brands, but before Liquid Death, there was Aquafina and Dasani, <laughs> right, right. and before the iPhone, there was the um, the BlackBerry, and and I mean, there's infinite examples. Right. Um, but um, so, but we have our home delivery service where our delivery artisan will bring a um, our um, patented airbrush metal rack and we'll place that wherever you want it to go. It comes with a canvas cover. And when you reorder, we take the empty one and replace it with a full one. It can wow. go up and down stairs, what we can put it inside, outside. And we put it through a very, very rigorous drying process. So whenever the wood um, so the wood is dried in a big giant oven, so it burns hotter, burn, starts way easier, smokes less, smells better. There's right. no bugs, so it's safe to store anywhere. <laughs> right. And it's just a night and day difference. Um, and it's the, it's the quality of the product, it's the quality of our service, and then our branding that attracts people. Is it worse when you get loser firewood from the grocery store that it's just, <laughs> that literally all it does is just kick off smoke from there? Kicks off smoke So is it, a, is it a subscription model? Is it, is it one time? How does it work? Yeah, so it's one time. Time, so you order and just as you, whenever you need more, you 
you place an order and it's kind of e-commerce. You can order on our website or you can call us or text us or email us. So let's back up for a second because when people start a business, a lot of people don't realize when they watch a roadmap that mm -hmm. it generally costs capital to start a lot of businesses. Yep. Was this the kind of business that you had to build a cap table and raise investors? Or how did you think about structuring that? Because I'm assuming mm -hmm. you need a lot of firewood and you need a place to store it. Right. So it costs money to get this business going. Absolutely, yeah. Originally, so I started it um, a little bit over 11 years ago. Wow, and, congratulations. Uh, um, I appreciate it. And started off just maxing out as many credit cards as I could <laughs> get my hands on. I mean, Idea number one, folks, <laughs> don't max out the credit cards. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, that definitely uh, um, raises the stakes and makes you nervous. I mean, uh, I remember telling um, people that I knew sometimes, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm in $250,000 of credit card debt and right. look at me like I just admitted I was on drugs or something. Um, but uh, um, so what did that and I, I would do this, uh, don't necessarily advise this, but roller coaster where I would <laughs> in the winter when I had cash, I would pay off all the credit cards and then in the summer, my credit score would shoot up to nearly 800 and I would right. get more credit cards and max them out. And then uh, um, graduated to getting bank loans and then in uh, 2019 um, brought on my first Did the investor. bank want to see some profitability before they loaned you money? Um, different banks were different. Um, yeah, some of them wanted to see profitability. Some of them wanted to see cash, just cash flow. Um, um, I got a... Uh, First SBA loan um, I got in 2020. Um, 2020. Yeah. So, right, you had pre pandemic or right around yeah, the pandemic. It was right pre pandemic. But, but, how do you decide as you grow the company about whether or not you take on more debt or whether or not you just fund this out of cash flow? Mm -hmm. You take on investors. You know, how do you think about that as an entrepreneur and a CEO? Yeah. Um, a big part, um, I am, I have always wanted to grow it. Um, and, and I love growing the brand, the brand name. Um, and so I'll bring on cash to do that. Part of, uh, the challenges are the cash flow. Is that because of the seasonality of the yes. business? Yes. Is the business really work because, I mean, it gets cold in different places, obviously a different time, mm -hmm. but is it mostly like a, an October, September, October mm -hmm. to March business? Yes. Um, yeah, September, we really start um, getting busier and it goes through January, February, depending on how cold the winter For is. For people and, ordering and then they yeah. order enough to just get through the season. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And now we've gotten in, into cooking wood which has helped really? out the uh, business. Because are there lot. that many people putting up pizza ovens in their backyard? Pizza ovens and Big Green Egg and sure. Mato Joe's and um, yeah, anything that uses charcoal or wood um, or yeah, pizza ovens. How, but how do you manage that thing that you said? Because there are businesses that have seasonality and it almost mm -hmm. feels like you know bears that have to hibernate for the winter and you store up on food. And so yes. as you think about, because payroll still happens every single month. So how, how do you try right, to manage Brent. the financials of that seasonality? Um, you bring on smart finance people, which <laughs> is different than the visionary. <laughs> That's really, and and you, so you have to have the forecasts and you have to get that forecast pretty um, accurate with the right. cash flow forecast. And so you, you, when you graduate into being more of a mature business, it's a little bit of, less of uh, what I used to do and been like, yeah, I got enough money. <laughs> we'll make it to the winter. <laughs> we'll make it. To, yeah, we'll make it to the winter, uh, which I did a few times. Um, but uh, um, and you get that cash flow projection and you always leave um, some margin in case you have a bad month or you have an unexpected expense. Now you have you have multiple flavors of wood, so to speak, I would Correct. say, like different flavor yep. profiles. Mm -hmm. Are you affected on the cost side on timber prices or how does that, how are you affected on the cost side? Yeah, because it, your business is labor, but you also have wood, you know, that's and wood right. costs money. We, yeah, we spend a lot of money on wood. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it does indirectly affect us. It's more of, uh, um, so we buy our wood from loggers and loggers will, um, they get pine, but then they also get hardwood. So if um, pine is a really hot commodity, it's hard to get the hardwood because they're focused on the pine. So that's really- And you practice. also though import, you said from Africa as that's well. What, what does that look like? The dynamics of mm -hmm. shipping wood literally from an international country to the United States? Mm -hmm. 
Um, fortunately, we have a partner that we work with that takes care of the hardest part of the logistics, but uh, um, it, it really was finding, um, finding the wood and getting samples of it and trying it out. Um, trying it out in the pizza oven, trying it out in uh, interesting in smoker, yeah. and 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 seeing what it pairs well with. It's uh, it's very very hard hardwood. It's harder than anything in North America, and burns longer and wow. hotter. And it, it's really like a rock, so it's really hard to get started. <laughs> so is yeah, figuring out really how's this packet? How can we package this for it, for it to be a good experience? Um, was the biggest challenge of it. Uh, talk to me a little about, I, I'm really, because I actually have purchased the wood from you before, so I've mm -hmm. been a customer as well, mm -hmm. and I, I, I love buying things from local businesses and national businesses mm -hmm. because there's no better way to understand a business than to be a customer of the business. Absolutely. But I think the marketing is quite genius, and I just, in this sense, I want, to, I want you to tell, talk a little bit about where you came up with your texting strategy because the texting strategy mm -hmm. to me feels very personal. I think a lot of businesses miss this, that mm -hmm. you can offer something and when you tell somebody you're going to be in their neighborhood, whether you are or you aren't, <laughs> um, but having that thing and getting the top yeah. of mind, how do you think about how you push the text marketing? What platforms do you use to push out the text marketing? I think, I think it's quite brilliant. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, we use uh, Salesforce really as the backbone where we keep all the the notes and details for each customer um, and which I love doing. We've had customers be like, wow, this is like the Rich Carlton. They remember things <laughs> right, about me. Yeah. But you it, remember uh, I like this wood. <laughs> yeah, which is always funny. They'll be like, I haven't ordered in two years. How did you remember that? <laughs> uh, but uh, um, so we use that that as the backbone, which is kind of where we, and it's really, we just keep detailed notes and we're organized. Um, and that allows us whenever a customer calls in or places an order, we can, and even like, uh, we'll have customers like, so we have 16 inch and 24 inch and, uh, um, and uh, um, firewood and somebody will order a 24 inch firewood and we'll say, hey, you usually order 16 inch, um, did you want the 24 inch or was that an accident? Right. And sometimes we'll be like, oh, thank you for catching that for me. Right. I didn't want um, that wood. Yeah, I didn't want that wood, which obviously uh, makes the experience a lot better than showing up at their house with the wrong size firewood. Um, and we've even had customers that have like um, 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 allergies of certain species and they'll accidentally order it and we'll be like, we've got notes that you've got allergies. <laughs> you don't we don't. <laughs> They'll be like, oh my gosh, thank you. Um, so on the texting, it, it really comes down. What really drives us is that customer experience, um, which is what drives me. And that's really what attracts the employees that work for us is they love serving the customer. And people are so happy to get their fire. Yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's so much, we get so many texts now. Um, but I love how we get through the noise because we actually care and want to serve the customer. And so we'll text customers and they'll say, thank you so much for checking in. I don't need any right now, but let me know when we need it in the future. Right. Like what other business would you text that back to the company for? So we have a, a direct line, a direct relationship for the customer that goes a lot deeper than do, do Google reviews matter to you? Um, yeah. They do. Yeah, they do. And uh, um, fortunately, we have very good Google reviews. Do you feel the Google reviews will, will optimize your organic SEO yes. and where it puts yes. you at the yep. top of the heap? Mm -hmm. Somebody says, need firewood, and basically your firm comes up first? Correct. That's, and that's really local SEO. So if you're in the general area where we service and you Google firewood, that really comes up on the map at the top of the search. Um, which is very powerful when you're in the area. So you you build this brand. Uh, we were we were talking before that in, invariably when you're you know a creator, you mm -hmm. invent something, so to speak. In this case, you invented something in a new market. Mm -hmm. People are going to rip you off. Now, mm -hmm. if it's in electronics, you're probably going to be ripped off by another country. Mm -hmm. But in this business, when somebody sees something good, they go, "Hey, well, we're not doing this in Denver, and they're not doing this in New York. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can." take this model and, and steal it, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you protect what you build? Is there any way to protect the model or protect the brand? Because nothing, so to speak, is patentable, is it? Or, or is uh, it? We do have a uh, patent on our delivery rack. You do? Mm -hmm. And the patent allows it to be um, moved via hand truck. 
And so we have a hand truck that'll go up and down stairs and across the yard without messing it up that are electric. Um, wow. And so we can place the rack essentially wherever. And that, when I first started the business, um, we were slightly innovative, and, but uh, um, it would take about two hours per delivery once I showed <laughs> up, um, which is better than just a pickup truck and um, right, right. and doing one delivery and then having to uh, with um, by hand carrying it all uh, or a wheelbarrow. But now, fifteen minutes um, per delivery. Fifteen is minutes for one delivery, full Once rack. Once you show up, yeah, with mm -hmm. the machine, and then you have a patent on that. But still, Correct. there are people that try to rip you off. Have you had to try to sue somebody who basically uh, did uh, we've that. We've sent some. Uh, we've sent some, some, cease, uh, and some <laughs> cease and desist. That's correct. But uh, um, on the other hand, it really is. It's quality. It's it's a passion and obsession with us. All about the customer experience. So a cheap knockoff. It's pretty obvious um, when somebody enters the market with an inferior product. Right. Um, it sizzles a little bit more. Um, they might mix in some of the wrong species to save some money, and then they hire somebody and pay them slightly above minimum wage to deliver to your home. I have uh, um, some funny stories talking to some other <laughs> firewood companies in the industry and kind of what their standards were um, compared to ours of the, cause we have delivery artisans right. that come and deliver to I your love home. that, that term. And, um, and, and when you call us, you, you have somebody that knows about firewood wants to serve you. Um, so the service is better. The product is better on the product quality. We, uh, um, we have a lot of celebrities that buy from us. One that's, uh, um, endorsed us publicly a few times is Terry wow. Bradshaw. Oh yeah. Um, and, um, we kind of have an internal internal mantra that every um, box or rack of wood that le leaves our warehouse, we want to, like it's going to Terry Bradshaw. When Terry Bradshaw places an order, there is no memo that says, "Hey, this is Terry Bradshaw. You better <laughs> right, get it right. right." It's everything that leaves the looks warehouse. Looks like Terry Bradshaw. Looks like it's going to Terry Bradshaw. What do you do mostly? Because finding good workers that mm -hmm. want to stay, that get excited about your company. Mm -hmm. What are the main things you do to try to create culture and retention strategies? Because in a labor force, one employment's at 4%, mm -hmm. and especially find people who probably want to deliver firewood, mm -hmm. it probably can be challenging to find those people. It's, it's been very challenging, and it's been a long road. But really, it's uh, um, we do rigorous um, interviewing, um, and we don't lower our standards even when we're I love desperate. That. Um, it's so easy when you're going into the busy season, you really need somebody to be like, I'm just going to take this, <laughs> uh, this guy or this gal. And, but uh, um, it's um, so it's we don't lower our standards and and really the people that we want to stay around, stay around because we we celebrate and reward um, taking care of the customers every day. Every single day we'll have um, multiple customers send us messages about your quality is incredible. I've never burned firewood like this. Or I used your cooking wood on the on my big green egg right. and my wife didn't know and she asked me what was different because this tastes better than anything <laughs> you've ever better. made. And, um, or um, it'll be um, Ruben was my delivery artisan today. He was incredible. How do you get such good employees? And so Ruben loves serving people and there's nothing he likes better than hearing those customers brag about him every day. Um, we get messages like that. Plus we get reviews online and on Google reviews and everything. And so every time something like that, we, we celebrate it internally. As you, as you build the company, you may keep this business forever. You may try to sell it one day. Are there things that you think about that you have to do to try to maximize the valuation of the business one day? Yeah, sometimes uh, um, there's there's strategies there, of course. Um, you can, uh, um, when you're, you can focus on growing the business, but that you usually lowers that EBITDA. Sucks up cash, um, that's Sucks sure. up cash when you're, <laughs> when you're focusing on that growth. Or you can kind of, um, slow down the growth or even stop focusing on on the marketing and increase the EBITDA, which would make it more sellable. As far as that goes, we'll see what. Yeah, 
One day someone's going to knock on the door and say, That's "Hey, right. I want a lot of firewood. Give me, give me a lot of, a lot <laughs> of firewood." Of one day, <laughs> what's what's the um, what's the one podcast or or book that you may be reading or listening to now that you <sighs> like as an entrepreneur? Anything that you like? Um, I mean, how I built that is always it's a great, good, good a great one podcast. that I listen t- from time to time. Um, good to great is uh, is kind of the book I always go back to. Great um, book. And, um, yeah. So for people watching today, if they want to get some firewood anywhere in the country, how can they find out more about Cutting Edge? CuttingEdgeFirewood.com. Yeah, folks, I love interviewing people like Leroy because when you think about what you're doing in any industry, if you can be just 10% different, now he's probably a lot more, he's created a new market, just 10% different. This is how you can start a business and build a business, but you have to be willing to jump off the bridge. And when he says he took out $250,000 of credit card debt, are you willing to take that kind of risk to ultimately get your reward? I'm Ted Jenkins. This is America's Small Business Network, and you watch The Roadmap next week. Thanks for watching The Roadmap with Ted Jenkins.